So it all started here. I left home and I said in my mind, I'll see you there from here. So I begin walking along here and starting to connect with the energy of the place. Those who are familiar with my blog know that I call this the spirits of the earth. I know that seems very new agey, but that's essentially what I'm trying to do. Connect with the conscious energies of the uh, natural things in the landscape. So I stop and I touch the trees and the rocks and so on and start connecting with them and asking for their help in this interaction. What I forget is that I don't need help at this point. Not, well, I don't need help because they're coming. And other times I don't know that they're coming. What I need help with is um, creating the right energy of the place. I'm going to make more sense later on. So I'm walking down the road. Uh, and just opposite those bins is where I become conscious of the interaction. So I'm walking here and then all of a sudden um, and why I look up and up there I see a an ovoid shaped craft and I can see a larger one above it and suddenly there's this uh, yellow light if you like uh, yellowish kind of energy field comes down and it's kind of like um, in a multi-pointed kind of star shape and it sort of just comes down. I don't see where it goes, it seems to go everywhere. And it's like this energetic kind of field is all around. And um, yeah, I feel this kind of strange numbness in my body. And then sort of within seconds I see um, 24, 25, um, different uh, entities, the small ones, uh, materialize out of the field and they begin coming towards me. Um, and at that point I crumple, you know, I hit the deck, completely crash. And look, I'll just set this up on a tripod and I can talk. So basically what happens is um, you know, I, I crumple and I hit the deck and I'm overcome by this really shocking nausea and I feel dreadfully sick, you know, as bad as I've ever felt. But worse than that, I'm really emotional. I just feel this sudden volatility, you know, like I want to laugh and cry at the same time. And I can't control it at all. Um, I hit the deck and so there are, you know, there's what 24, 25, and I can see there's numerous entities walking around, and um, three of them come up to me, and they slowly pick me up and walk me back over to the lip of the road here, and put me. They've fixed the road since we had flooding here. It's a little different before. They put me back up here, so I'm sitting on the edge here, and. Um, I'm totally out of it, and they basically tell me that they're going to try and help me. Uh, what they first say to me, I've got some notes here, so I hope you don't mind reading because a lot happened, and it's very hard to remember um, every single line without going through it again, and I, I'm not ready to do that. So they said to me, we're here to help you to answer your questions, don't be afraid. We mean you no harm, only to help you. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm crying uncontrollably, and they're trying to tell me we don't mean to cause you suffering, and they tell me we are causing you suffering by our presence. And so the three of them come over to me, and they um, guide me back down. And they asked me to lie down, 
and I lie down and the world just basically blacks out. And then I kind of regain a sense of awareness. And uh, three of them are there with me and I start to feel better and I lift my head and, and I say I want to sit up. And you have to remember I had a, a backpack when I left. I was holding a tripod. Um, had cameras, uh, camera and video in the backpack and I had a jacket on. And I don't remember what happened to any of that stuff. And I sit up and they're comforting me. And they're trying to tell me um, it will pass. And it does pass. Um, the worst of the nausea passes. The horrible physical sensation. But what remains is still that sense of emotional volatility. It's as if you can't hide anything. Suddenly everything you've suppressed in your life, everything, everything, good and bad, comes up. And you can't do a goddamn thing to control it. And I'm, I'm in this state. And it, I don't know how long it takes. It feels like just a couple of minutes. Maybe it takes longer. And you know, we're in a public place here. Um, it's sometime after, well, close to nine o'clock. And when I think about it, I wonder, did anyone else see anything? The lights, the craft? I don't know. I don't know. I don't have an answer. It was quiet time here, so there weren't many, we were, we had a lot of tourists here, and there weren't many tourists. So, yeah, I don't know what happened. Um, I can tell you, ironically, my son had an encounter in the property up there, not 50 metres away, uh, several years before, and I'd also had an encounter there. Um, we had numerous encounters in this area before we began to live here. So I'm lying on the ground, and um, and I lift my head up, and I slowly begin to make sense of things, and I sit up, and I can see in front of me um, about ten or twelve of the entities, and these are the smaller ones, about three and a half, four foot sitting in front of me like school children here on the road with their legs crossed you know, just hands in their lap and they look so um, innocent peaceful and there are a couple of entities there, there's the three who are with me a couple on one side, one on the other um, And slowly, it dawns on me what's happened. Um, and I begin to start asking them questions. I remember some of the questions I wrote down that I had in my back pocket. Like, oh, it's really odd because I don't remember actually pulling out the questions from my back pocket. You know, I'm very much a um, have to write things down kind of person, which is why I've, I've got a few notes because. You know, I've got a sieve head of uh, memory at the best of times, and I don't trust myself to remember stuff that's important sometimes. Um, it might have a lot to do with why this was kind of screened out. And I don't remember pulling those questions out of my pocket, I just ask them. So the first thing I start to ask them about is my health. What I didn't mention before is that in 2007 I had a rare cancer diagnosed and I lost my left kidney and that cancer came back um, in May this year and prior to that I had a few concerns that it might be back and I had um, a lot of discomfort and so that was you know, top of my list to ask them about my health. So they began to examine me. Um, funny, I remember having my shirt off, but I don't remember taking it off. And um, one of the entities, well, several of them placed their hands on me, but one in particular was moving its hand around different parts of my body and eventually settled its hand on my chest. 
And it's funny, the instant that hand touched my chest, I felt a really powerful recollection. I remembered who they were. And what I remembered was that they were the entities that we'd called the Brownies. And that the Brownies came in 1997, the middle of the night. They appeared like a fluxing light, kind of wearing some kind of... Hard to tell if it was a moving robe or it was part of their bodies. And I woke up and found a hand in my, inside my chest. And um, it was Druid and the entity moved around the bed and it was there for about 20 minutes. And I spoke to it, uh, you know, telling how I was studying it and so on. So I had uh, a very strong recollection of um, that set of encounters from that period. But the minute it touched my chest, I remembered. What was different is I was seeing these entities in the flesh, whereas before they seemed to be not entirely here. So I didn't see them in the flesh. I saw kind of like a light form. I suspect they were moving between dimensions um, or, or moving. If you read my blog, I talk about intradimensional and interdimensional. I'm still not sure exactly what they were doing, but this was very different, this form, they were in the physical form, like you and I. And so I began asking them about my health and they began explaining, um, they felt um, under my ar arms as well, in my back, and I have a swollen lymph node that caused me a lot of concern. Still didn't have good answers on that, I'd had it for four years. And they explained to me that my body wasn't good at excreting certain things. I needed to be conscious of what I ate, that my body was highly sensitive to certain foods. And they started telling me more. And there's a block there, there's things I don't remember. But they started to explain um, something else. Can you just hold on and adjust the camera? They started to explain um, something that I didn't expect. And that, that came because as they were doing this, I had, I had no control over the emotional state I was in. And I said to them, I don't, I don't want to die now. I'm not ready to die. And it was as if this fear I have of the cancer killing me, I couldn't hide it from them. It just came out. You know, I had absolutely no defense. Anyone who thinks you can meet an alien and bluff it, you can pretend, you can do what you want, bullshit. You are powerless. You are nothing in their presence. Um, you don't even have a presence of mind to be as present as you think you'd like to be. So the feeling I had, the fear that I'd been suppressing, that I'd bluffed myself I didn't have, it came out. And it was very, um, very difficult to deal with. And they were very comforting. So that led them to then talk about something that wasn't one of my questions. They started to talk to me about Carnatec. They started to tell me that I needed to do what Carnatec was telling me in terms of my health. And I should tell you, Carnatec has given me a whole regime of things to do to look after myself and to have a fulfilling, healthy life. Sometimes I'm good at following that, sometimes I'm not. I don't have the best discipline in the world sometimes. Um, sorry, there's lots of mozzies out. And they said to me, we asked Karnatek when he was on Earth to look after you. We told him you would be coming. And when they said that, it just blew me away. He had told me himself that he'd had numerous contacts with different races during his life. And in fact, that's how he learned a lot of uh, the traditional energy healing that he did and most of you will know that the Chinese pioneered 
this kind of work. He was one of those early pioneers and he was telling me that they gave him a lot of this knowledge. And he was I and they were telling me that they asked him more than 3,000 years ago to look after me. What I came to believe later on that meant that he was watching out for me through every lifetime. Not just this one. But at first I didn't quite understand what they were telling me. So I was pretty overwhelmed by that. Um, you know, I, I wasn't ready for that. I wasn't ready to find out that this person I had a great deal of trust chose to help me but was asked by them to help me and watch out for me in my life. Um, and I kind of felt really privileged, really honoured and quite ashamed that I hadn't always been that uh, honourable to Karnatek. So, you know, I couldn't really contain that either in front of them. So, much of the time I was with them, I was actually crying. Um, I then asked them, who are you? And they said a number of things that I wrote down. You know, I want to say them to you verbatim because I think they're important. Um, they're very honest. They don't hide anything. So they say to me, um, we are the ones who made you. They're the ones who made us. But they're the ones who made me. And later on I realise it, it only confirmed other things that I had been shown and told. Uh, these were one of the species who made humanity. But they had also made me. And I'll explain what that means later on. And they also said something really corny. They said, we are the beloveds, the beloved ones who care for you. And they went on then to explain what that meant. And they said something that I'll never forget. Once again, it's pretty cheesy stuff, but it didn't sound too, so cheesy because when they said it, there was an intense knowing of truth, an intense connection with them. You have to realise when you connect with them, there's, there's nothing like that experience. In fact, right now I can feel the um, third eye region. I feel some stuff going on there, and it's very uncomfortable. I've got some people walking up the road, so I'm going to just pause for a minute and we'll get back to it. Anyway, sorry, I had a few neighbours uh, stop to talk to me, so I um, can't even remember where we we're at. So I'll just try and go back to where I think I was at. Um, so I have the entities who are um, checking me for my health, and they're talking to me about the state of my body, not being able to excrete things properly. They begin to talk to me about uh, what's going on with the spread of tumours in my body, so they confirm my concerns. Now in my initial recall I didn't remember that, I only remember the first part. And I think part of the reason I was overwhelmed, apart from the fact that it would have happened anyway from just their presence was knowing that. And that's what led them on to talk about Karma Tech. And I really was overwhelmed when they told me how they had asked him and they had been there all that time. Um, you know, how do you deal with something like that? Just, you know, it just turned everything on its head knowing that here are entities who were, who met someone who cares for me, who lived 3,000 years ago, who is now dead. 
and they continue to interact with you. So that means a couple of things. One, death doesn't mean much to them in the way it does to us. Uh, and either they're very old, at least 3,000 years old, or they're able to move in and out of time, which I know they can do, but you know, moving back 3,000 years is a long way. So things began here and they were really confronting. I don't remember getting up ready to leave, but I did. So we had, I can't remember the exact number, 10 or 12 of them sitting here in front of me. And I felt connected to them, like they were absorbing everything and I was absorbing things back to them. And they were connected mind to mind, heart to heart. And there were numerous other ones walking around, and I don't know what they were doing. Now, something that I really should tell you is really important, says a lot about them. I'm not big on telling you how they look, because I don't think that's important. Although, you know, I can tell you the basics. There's a lot I can't remember intimately about how they look. But I want to tell you this. That energetic field that came down, Somehow they were connected to the field, and they were not walking on the ground. They were walking above the ground, just, you know, a small amount, but they were walking above the ground. What I later realized and learned the full extent of what that meant was that they value all life so much that to walk on an ant, um, is disrespect for life. They honour all life so much that they create this field so they don't walk on a single living thing. Um, I can't say that accidents don't happen, but they try consciously to avoid walking on anything, and that is why the field is here. It may also help them to be able to walk in our gravity, I'm not sure about that. And to give you a sense what I'm talking about, if you meet and spend time with a Buddhist, you'll discover that many Buddhists, if you go out for a walk with them, will walk around ant nests, will avoid walking on ants, and be very conscious of the smaller life, and not to cause more suffering. And so that's what they're like. They consciously choose to avoid causing more pain and more suffering. So they create this field that allows them to do that. And I also saw that when I saw them in 97 and when I saw the tall aliens in 2009 walking on this field. So from here I begin to walk down the road. Um, I don't have a recollection of leaving, but something compelled me to leave. Now a lot more happened here, this is just a brief overview. So the main things were, talk about my health, they, are doing things to my body. I'm overwhelmed by all this nausea and this uh, emotion and this strong physical state. And um, they talked to me about Carnatic and, you know, as I say, there's a, a number of other things. But just that in itself would be overwhelming. But a lot more happens, so yeah, I'll take you down the road and we'll talk a little bit more.